Hi, my name is Brian from BH Photography here in Ottawa, and today we're going to talk about modifying a Vivitar to use it with a with a radio popper, so you can have control of your flash on your camera. Hey, I'm Brian from BH Photography. I'm uh, based out of Ottawa, Ontario. Um, for you Americans, that's in the Great White North. And as you can see, we don't have snow right now. Um, the one day a year. Anyways, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, small flash and just have them, um, what you can do with it and uh, some nice quick setups. Um, today I'm going to be using a Vivitar 283. Um, I've kind of hacked it. I put a hat, a um, headphone jack, into where the um, little twisty dial used to be, and uh, it's hooked up into a radio popper. So the reason I'm using the radio popper um, is the Junior Junior X. Um, studio, which means that uh, from the camera and the transmitter on the camera, I can turn up and down my flash. Um, what we're probably going to do is get a lot of distance between myself and the model. I like to use a um, 70 to 200 and uh, try to get it racked out to 200 as much as possible. Um, so that means I'm, I'm way far back and uh, your little hot shoe flash is just not going to reach, it, especially if it's on camera. So we're going to have it on a stand, um, fairly close to the model. I'm not going to use any modifiers on it. Uh, we might bounce it off a wall or something like that. Um, it all depends. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. I'm going to try to show you a couple different things. Uh, we're going to turn day into night and uh, we're going to stick with just one flash. Um, as for the mod on the 283, I've heard that some of them don't work. It depends if it's made in China or Japan. I can't really remember which one is which that I've done. I had two. One of them worked, one of them didn't. Um, I'm using the 283 instead of using a... Um, what's that called? 285? No, the little... RP, instead of using an RP cube, because um, I really don't want to put my SP900 anywhere near the water. Um, with this thing, if it gets knocked over and goes in the water, they're 30 bucks to replace instead of uh, $500. Um, so that's why I'm going to use this one. I use this one a lot. Um, that way if it gets damaged or anything like that, I don't have to worry about it. I have a SB900 that I'll use on camera. And a lot of times I'll just use that for focus assist with a uh, radio popper hooked onto the back end of it. Um, so let's get at it. So here's, here's the 283, what it is, it's, a, it's just a headphone cable that I have, um, I think I just had this lying around, and then under all this tape, when you take the, um, the dial, that's the auto adjuster that's already on it, when you take that off, you'll have, um, what I did was I took it apart, and I got a lot of contacts, and then I put it back in, and it was a little bit of trial and error on to see which one would fire what, there was a couple of tutorials on Flickr, um, what I'll do is I'll have a l I'll post a link to uh, my photo that I have on on Twitter on Flickr to kind of show you where all the pins go and what um, what happens. So each pin on here has to do with a specific thing, and um, so you do need the three pins. And uh, what I've done here is it's just velcroed on. I can easily take it on or off, switch them. I've numbered mine so that I remember which one is which. Um, sometimes I'll do a two light setup or a three light setup and this way I can remember which one I have on, on what flash. And uh, pretty much that's it. I've got some velcro here in case I want to put a gel on. And that's about it. I've put um, a little bit of electrical tape to make it a little less um, of a hack job and a little more professional looking. Um, nobody really notices the look of it. Sometimes I have to add a little bit extra here or there, but other than that, it's pretty basic, and that's that. 